Alright ladies and gentlemen, the Seek and Destroy major update is now officially out. We finally got a glance of AIM-120 and top tier BBR gameplay. Two weeks ago I made a video about why the new fix for 16 vs 16 matches is by no means enough and while top tier suffers a lot from the messy gameplay, 32 player matches are by no means a suitable choice for any game mode at any BR range. But for some reason YouTube decided to not recommend it to you guys. So here I am, with more data, more answers, making another video. Now for the sake of more straightforward approach to these issues, I will provide a more simplistic approach in this video, by asking questions and then providing an argument for it and if possible, trying to find a solution. So what is exactly wrong with 32 player matches and top tier? Well the basic premise was the fact that with 32 players in a match and the majority of them being BVR missile trucks, especially in maps that are not designed for this type of gameplay, it will cause a series of issues. The first issue is the chaoticness of the matches. This chaoticness renders top tier gameplay incredibly inconsistent, opening room for more RNG and at the same time closing doors on planes that have different roles like ground pounding and bombing missions. The second problem is how this amount of players essentially render other features of the game useless. We got a detailed radar warning receiver, different radar modes, IRST locks, etc. But what is the point of having all these different realistic features if the majority of fights are going to be boiled down to staying on the side skirts and launching missiles at clueless enemies? Are the 32 player matches only a problem in top tier and unrealistic battles? Well, the answer is no. While it's fair to call lower BR props a much more sophisticated gaming experience, this problem affects ground battles and lower BRs as well, but it's still far more tolerable compared to ARB top tier. In the previous video we used the Abrams tank analogy. Because there are more players in the games, every minute buff or nerf such as reducing the reload rate on all Abrams tanks, which was created to improve their performance in 1 vs 1 situations, gets amplified to a game-changing alternative, because now there is a higher chance of facing multiple Abrams tanks, and suddenly the RNG factor skyrockets and turns every fight into a roll dice. Now the possible solutions would be either a smaller sized games or larger sized maps, putting more emphasis on objectives and spreading out the bases and AI combos. Now the average Redditor Gaijin Dick Rider would still defend 32 player matches by saying, but what about the scores and the amount of RP I can make per match? Well simple, if Gaijin decides to lower the player count, they have to increase the research point ratios as well. But I totally understand that it is a tough pill to swallow because for the past 10 years we have been trained and conditioned by Gaijin to fixate on progression. That's what makes money for Gaijin. And frankly there was nothing wrong with this model until now. But the biggest problem starts with a new phenomenon. It's new for us and it's completely out of discourse for Gaijin. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at the point of no return. We are rapidly approaching the end game phase in terms of content and new vehicles for all major nations. Gaijin should realize this and start taking the steps to shift the goalposts to making the matches and real time gameplay more fun and tolerable. Now it's obvious that Gaijin is completely confused at this point of time. They just want to play it safe and keep the majority of player base happy in the short term. Hence why they try to address the 32 player matches by this awful solution. I knew it's not gonna be enough and I called it 2 weeks prior to the update. You might ask why? Simple. Whenever you have to lock a feature behind another option, majority of players are going to miss it, and even less players are gonna try to utilize it. So in the end, War Thunder is at a crucial point, and if Gaijin wants to come out from the other end of a the tunnel, they have to take the matters into their own hands. A screw what the majority of players are thinking right now. These people will be the same players leaving your game when the thrill of progression wears out. Take some more risk and impose your will on the player base. You cannot trust the progression driven consumer base to call the best decisions for the longevity of your game. It's time for you to take back control and immortalize this game because of how it plays, and not only for the grind and reaching the top tier vehicles. Alright everybody, if you want to help the cause you can join our channel membership or support us through Patreon, or simply leaving a like and subscribing. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you.